the real breakthrough in the Green Revolution was to turn plants from the indigenous tall varieties, which collapse if you feed them with chemical fertilizers, they lodge, to dwarf varieties that can take up more chemical fertilizers. And the dwarfing mechanism was really a mechanism to make plants eat more chemicals. That's all it was about. The fact that more food was produced is again a mythical construct. More food was displaced. But like at everything else in industrial society, we do not calculate what we destroy. And you know, the patriarchal mind just takes something that has come out of that destruction and says, we've created out of the blue. But every field that got a Green Revolution variety had before it maybe eight crops, 10 crops, feeding local people, feeding them with a nutritionistly ba balanced diet. In the case of India, feeding them, giving them oil seeds, pulses, and cereals, three crops that must be planted together, because as vegetarians, those are the three sources of a balanced nutrition for us. Green Revolution varieties of re rice and wheat meant that the crops that supply us pulses, uh, protein, and oil seeds just disappeared. And we now have a terrible scarcity of these staples, because these are not traded on a world market. India is a huge continent of vegetarians. The world <laughs> is not. The world grain traders definitely don't supply food for the vegetarians. So we are stuck with buildup of what is called surplus in government go-downs, and more hungry people today than we had at the time of independence more perennially, permanently malnutritioned, deprived people. And the saddest thing with the Green Revolution is that for the first time in, hin in history, whether you take Africa, Latin America, or Asia, the people who are starving are the food producers. That never happened before. If you were an agriculturist, you were fed. If you were in the town, maybe there was famine. The Green Revolution has reversed that equation between the country and the town because it has turned agriculture from being a producing sector into being a consuming sector. Guzzling chemicals, eating up oil, either as energy or in the form of fertilizers, and basically totally dependent on inputs that come from industry and urban areas, and probably outside the country, imported inputs. So what we basically have is a situation in which the food producers starve, and the ones who've never worked at producing food have food abundance. That reversal to me is perverse, totally perverse. Among those who starve, of course, are women, because women are the primary food producers across the world, even though we've learned how to see farmers only as men. Most farmers, even today in the world, are women. Whether you take it in terms of time spent on farm work, whether you take it in terms of the quantity of food produced, most staple food is getting produced in the world in spite of all World Bank and other agency recommendation to stop producing food and just produce cash crops for export. If food is still being produced in small families, it's because it's a woman who's continuing to think of 